You would have people who hated ISIS and people who joined ISIS living in the same house. The question of what counts as affiliation is really a lot murkier and complex in Iraq than it is contemplating it from afar. Or when we affiliation think of, with? With uh, a terrorist group of any sort, really. Mm -hmm. But especially ISIS in Iraq is a different thing than it is when we think of ISIS recruits coming from Europe, carrying out attacks in Europe. People who traveled from far away to be part of this project were there to form a caliphate. Mm -hmm. And that was the fulfillment of this prophecy and this vision and this dream. People who lived in Iraq, uh, it was a much more complex issue. Someone who joins the group, it affects their entire family in very complicated ways. You would have people who hated ISIS and people who joined ISIS living in the same house. But the consequence now is that in the aftermath of the Islamic State, anyone who is so tangentially related to anyone else who is in the group it's is now, now considered up. to be a part of the group. You are Not by the family, but by the government. By the government. Mm -hmm. By the government and by various militias, uh, sectarian militias that are carrying out massacres of Sunnis, and in fact, which the government is providing cover for by um, lying about the provenance of mass graves, taking journalists to scenes where uh, Shiite militia groups have murdered large numbers of Sunnis who are thought in some women and children who may have had, you know, male relatives who joined ISIS, massacre the whole group, bury them in a mass grave, bring journalists in, show the journalists and say, look what ISIS did. So if I'm a member of a family of someone who joined ISIS, then I am fundamentally, effectively guilty of murder? If I murdered someone on camera with my face shown mm -hmm. uh, and you were my brother, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty likely we would both experience a three or four minute trial, which would result in death sentences. Equally likely. Equally likely. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Yeah, it's a 98% conviction rate. How far out does this go? Is it just immediate family or is it like... Cousins. Cousins. Officially, they're camps for internally displaced Iraqis. In practice, they're turning into camps for ISIS families and they're essentially detention camps out in the desert. These are women and children and distant relatives of men who joined the group. And some of them, uh, in fact, had no relatives who joined, but are simply perceived as having relatives who joined. I spoke to a woman, for example, whose husband didn't join ISIS, but his brothers did. So then he was uh, detained as an ISIS fighter, tortured into a false confession, probably sentenced to death. And she, who wasn't married to an ISIS fighter, is now considered an ISIS widow. And so her children are uh, considered to be ISIS children. If they were under four or five years old, the only documents they would have would be ISIS birth certificates, which the Iraqi government will not replace or recognize. And therefore, these children are growing up stateless within their own state. We're talking about tens of thousands of people. And if you take entire you know, networks of families, uh, including cousins, aunts, and so on, hundreds of thousands of people are being um, are being punished uh, by their supposed liberators for essentially the crime of having lived in Mosul under the Islamic State. Mm -hmm.